Imagine the internet is a library. Think of the books as web pages. Most of the volumes, fiction, non-fiction, classics, comics, coffee table books, are in English. A much, much smaller section that isn't really divided into genres is dedicated to Hindi books. And over here, in one teensy little corner of the place, are the books in regional languages. And this library is what most AI learns from. So much text in English and very, very little in regional languages. It's not surprising that AI features in regional Indian languages are so poor. But what is being done to fix this? The internet has now been around for about 20, 25 years, I may be wrong. Um, but in most of that time, it has started in English-speaking countries. A lot of the content, just for decades and decades, has been English. Safia works at Karya, an NGO that sources voice recordings from rural India. They're among the companies that are working to make regional Indian languages accessible to AI. The link between AI and English is clear. AI needs data to learn from, and that is available in tons in English. There are other languages that offer loads of learning material as well, like French and Spanish, and AI has made great strides in all of these. These languages are referred to as high-resource languages. Languages like Kannada are classified as low-resource languages simply because there isn't enough data available on the internet in this language for AI models to learn from. And that is really where you see, I think, that division between low resource and high resource. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's not a lot of speakers of a low resource language. In fact, many low resource languages like Hindi, for example, have billions of speakers. But it's just that the presence on the Internet is not as prominent as, unfortunately, English. You know, everyone started with a thought process of, uh, you know, the person who knows English can use Internet. Amitabh Nag is the CEO at Bhashini, a government initiative that is working towards transcending language barriers in the use of technology. And the content creation by even Indians have been, you know, in English itself. And uh, that is something which has to change for the uh, internet to be multilingual, especially multilingual as far as Indian language is concerned. How does one make the internet multilingual? How is this gap between high resource and low resource languages being bridged? One thing that's happening is, physical documents in various Indian languages are being digitized every day. This creates data sets. So, with the, all the Digital India campaign and everything going on, that we are digitizing every information that is available right now. Hindi has already been, a lot of the amount of the data has been digitized. But the same for the other languages, it is currently now being done. But that's not enough. Data in high resource languages already exists. It simply needs to be curated. But for a language like Kannada, data needs to be created. If you were in a school training students in a language, but there weren't enough books in that language, you'd actually have to go out and write them. That's what a lot of startup companies are doing. They are creating data sets for the training of AI models, and they're doing this with the direct involvement of native speakers. The creation of such data sets is advantageous in multiple ways. First of all, if you speak a regional language, you would know that there are multiple dialects of it based on where you're from. Namaskara, hegi dira, chanagi dira. Namaskar re, henga diri, arama dira la. Nan hestru pallavi, hutti beldi dala Bengaluru nalle. Nanu rashpi, hutti beldi dala Dharwad daga. Bengaluru nalli vattu belagye tumma male bartai to. I Bengaluru aga munje ne dhoant mali suri tada. Madhyana tumma bislu kuda ito. Madhyana nigi nigi bislir tada. Sanjay swalpa tampa gito. Sanjika, Junu Junu Gudu Thandi. Ratri on to Tumba Jora Malebartaito. Ratri, Matu Malibarta Dripa. Bengalura Hege, Hege Yava Gena Gutenta Hero the Kagodilla. I Bengalur Hengant Helaka Agudilla. This problem of dialect is not a very big challenge in Western languages. When data is created by native speakers, each one of them speaks in their own dialect. A model that is trained on this data can recognize all of these dialects. So no one would be left behind just because they speak the same language differently. Second, it gives native speakers an opportunity to use their mother tongue as a tool to bring in more income. 
So what Karya does uh, is we are trying to build pathways out of poverty for rural Indian by using AI-enabled solutions. So very specifically, we have an Android app where we're, um, we bring basically data work from the global data industry to rural India. Karya work is entirely meant to be done whenever the person wants to do it, right? So we are not saying this is full-time work. We really don't want anyone to be working on the phone for eight hours a day. Bhasha Dan is a similar initiative by the government of India. Ashadan is a, a crowdsourcing initiative where we are urging the citizens to participate, contribute to the data, which can be in this form of speech or text or validate the data which is there. We would be soon step by step launching it for 22 languages. And we believe that this would help us to capture the low resource language. I showed you in the last video this chatbot called Jugal Bandi that performed very well in Hindi, Kannada and Tamil. Now, why is it that it performed so well while GPT and BART did not? The answer is actually quite different from what you'd expect. Jugal Bandi is trained on data from only one website. It is powered by GPT. GPT helps it to communicate this information conversationally. So in effect, it can converse with the user. The last step is the most important one. Jugal Bandi translates this information using the Bhashini API into other languages. GPT is trained on minimal regional language data from the internet. It generates answers directly in our regional languages. But Jugal Bandi is simply translating English data into regional languages. Of course, the obvious difference between GPT and Jugal Bandi is that unlike GPT, Jugal Bandi cannot answer every question you ask it. Its functionality is limited to the website on which it has trained. More and more such data is created and assembled every day. Eventually, we can create enough data sets to train an AI model in our languages. LLMs are farther away from us, I would say, you know, at least, you know, five to six years. You know, Microsoft Research did this benchmarking of how LLMs worked in various languages and Indian languages were among, uh, among the like bottom percentage because there's just, you know, it was really relying on translation of whatever we have on the internet and it, and it just wasn't enough. If you are asking like what is the commitment levels of the system to put it in perspective, uh, I think like two to three years back there was a commitment to deliver 22 scheduled languages may language models and they exist today. Right, like so, so I think the commitment levels are very, very high. The creation of a large language model in regional languages might take several years, but there are more pressing concerns with regard to artificial intelligence in India, namely the regulation of it. This technology is growing rampantly while the law is left playing catch up. What are some of the steps our country is taking to regulate the use of AI? Coming up in the next video. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss it. Thank you.